Hey guys, and welcome back. I'm Said, a DevOps engineer with a massive interest in security. Today we're looking at an application called Tenable Nessus. Now, Tenable Nessus is a vulnerability assessment application. It effectively outputs to you the issues wrong with your environment or a list of you know potential vulnerabilities, um, and it rates it from critical all the way down to low. It also offers with your vulnerabilities remediations. So it's not just that it gives you issues, it also gives you how to solve those issues. I know we can see a number of different um, price plans here. We, we won't be signing up for the £4,000 a year one, nor the £8,000, nor 11000 We're not paying anything for it today. We're going to be running it, deploying it on Docker, super quick for you guys, adding that DevOps twist to it, making it super easy, breaking down that concept, the difficult concept, into bite-sized, practical, uh, hands-on projects, such that you by the end of this video, hopefully, we'll be able to at least gauge a better understanding on how to use the application and at the very least, um, be able to explain it to somebody else. Now, I've created a number of different videos in the past before. If you haven't seen them already, be sure to check out my YouTube channel. Um, the theme is predominantly Kubernetes and in specific security for Kubernetes. Um, so I have a playlist that I've, um, I've, I've consolidated together of 24 videos of security best practices, as well as other projects like... Uh, you know, running Splunk, uh, a Splunk indexer as our seam and ingesting data. And then also, of course, getting the output of that data, as well as Kafka, um, running Kafka uh, container, building it out from its image right the way through to the container and then deploying it on Kubernetes. So, yeah, if you do enjoy that, be sure to check out my channel and also consider subscribing. I've also got a X account. So if you'd like to follow me on that, you can do that. The link should be down below in the description box as well as my LinkedIn page too. Now, without further ado, let's crack on and let's run this on Docker. I'm gonna minimize that. So I've got my, my terminal here. Um, first things first, you need to pull down the image if you haven't already. So that will be Docker pull, of course. And I will be providing a readme page too. So you should be able to hopefully in the description box, select that and follow through it step by step. Now I've already pulled down the image. Um, so if I do images, LS, you'll see the Tenable Nessus uh, image right there. Now what we need to do is effectively build out a container using that image. So we'll just go off and hit Docker run. Got that up. Do, 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 Docker run. There we go. So I've got that run right there. So, so if we hit that, we've got the host name, we've provided it at Nessus, and we've also got the port that we've specified, as well as the um, the image. So that should build out. So to save time, obviously, I'm going to leave the logs up there for you guys to have a look at, to keep an eye on. Um, let me actually close this plane here and do the same here. Yep, and we'll just open it to the side. Cool. So now if I hit Docker PS, I've already ran the image. So this will be obviously building out. It won't be healthy right away. It does take some time, but I've thankfully already um, sort of uh, got that application up. So um, I'm just going to bring that back up to the screen and just head over to the localhost so it will take you through an in, in, in initialization process be sure to not register um as a licensed organization so you need to, you know skip that we'll have a look at that we'll circle back to it but super quickly what i'll do is i've already created the account and I've had it initialized. It does take roughly about 20 minutes or so to initialize. So for the, yeah, for the purpose of obviously time, um, I will directly log in. So if I hit login, you'll see me and my environment. So this is what it looks like. The, the, the application actually running, um, on, on, on a Docker container. Now, if I head over to, uh, I've created a folder, so you can create your folder here. You can name it whatever you like. You can call it, um, my PC, and then you could just navigate over to the folder and just create a new scan. So, um, I've already run a scan previously before, but we'll run a new one. So I'll call this my PC. And then you specify your IP address. So for me, I think I should already have 
And in my case, I'll be using my laptop's IP. It's private IP, of course. So, um, of course, again, in a working environment, you'll likely have virtual machines that you'll be scanning for. Um, in my case, I just thought, just do a quick tutorial and um, use the resources that are scan available on my PC. Yeah, we'll call that my PC IP address as a given, and then we'll hit save on there. So now what that will happen, what will happen there is if I navigate back over to my folder, we'll see here we've got a, a scannable um, application or an environment rather, and that could be the on demand or we can run it on a schedule basis. So if you're working in a you know a commercial environment, then likely you may need to sort of run that on a regular basis. Cool. So if I head back over to there, I'll be able to see that I can launch the actual scan. So if I hit launch, it will take some time before it does build out. But um, let's see if the application that we've effectively, the container that we've ran has built. And that's just to show you guys what the registration process will look like just while that scan runs. So if I hit Docker PS, then here we'll see that the second application, here we go. Here we go. So let's open up Docker desktop super quick to get a better view on it. There's two ways, obviously, you can run Docker if you didn't know already. There's the Docker desktop application that gives you a sort of UI looking um, front. And then there's obviously the CLI. I prefer to use the CLI only because at work, um, I work with within a Linux environment. And we actually, I mean, as I can, of course, install um, Docker desktop, but I just prefer for seamless flow <clears throat> and integration to just use Docker directly from the, from the CLI. <clears throat> Excuse me. Cool. So um, the image that we, that should take us over to our environment. Okay, cool. So that's not liking that. Perhaps it's because of the port. Let me provide it a different port. So if I head over to the container and I just say here, view details, what I could even do is using the image, use a different port. So yeah, from this image, I'll remove that out of the way. From the image here directly, I could just run it and just provide it a different port. So that didn't like that port. So we'll say this to be 8835. <clears throat> there we go. Just give that a minute to build out and then hopefully have a little look to see whether that's completed. Yep, my PC scan has completed. Um, we can see here there's two vulnerabilities. We can actually have a little read of it too. So we can see, I mean, from the vulnerabilities, we could see there's uh, a ranking. So we can see info, low, medium, high, or critical. Um, obviously, commercially, you'd sort of be focused, of course, on the critical, app, you know, right away. A lot of the time, the industry standard is to, you know, put those first, I guess, um, over any other, of course, um, level of pr um sort of uh, priority. Of course, if it's high, then that's more important than the medium and, you know, so on and so forth. So if I head over to my vulnerabilities, I can see here Nessus scan information, get some more insights. You can see here that this plugin displays, um, of course, for each tested host, the information about the scan itself. So here we get further information, more insights, get to see the scanner IP, so on and so forth. Thankfully, on the host environment, there isn't any, you know, vulnerabilities at all. So, it's nothing really exciting here to be sick, to be fair. Um, so yeah, of course, um, it's quite a straightforward application. You run your, you run your scan and yeah, you get your insights, you get your remediations and you kind of move from there. So you were to be following along, this would be what, you know, you would be effectively looking at. So at first it's complaining about a bad request. It says that your browser sent a request that this server could not understand. The reason is because you're speaking plain HTTP to an SSO enabled server port. So we know right away that the protocol that it's using is incorrect. We need to correct that by adding the S at the end of it. Um, and that just, you know, makes it uh, secure. So here it tells us and prompts us that it's not a private connection, but we're happy with that because of course this is our own container. So then you'll see this page, this will be about, you know, for about, a few minutes so i'll just resume at the point in which it has the next 
the next page. With regards to the email, um, it's weird because if I attempt to sign in with a, or if I attempt to register with a Gmail account, then it will refuse it. But with an Outlook account, it it will be happy with that. Now, you don't need to use a real email account. Obviously, this is not my email. So if anyone is looking to spam me, this isn't it. Um, this here will, of course, um, yeah, it doesn't ask you for any kind of, um, you know, uh, confirmation link or anything like that. So, yeah, go ahead and register. Once it's happy with that, it will, should take you over to give you your activation code, which you don't really need. This is the part that's kind of important because when you're logging in and out of Nessus, especially when, say, your session has ended uh, and you attempt to get, you know, your get back into your portal, then it will prompt you to log in. And that's important that you actually keep this username and password safe. So I'm going to give it a username and a password. Make sure you keep a note of that. Obviously, you can always show your password, take a screenshot of it. I probably wouldn't advise it, to be fair with you. Uh, maybe keep a note of it elsewhere, perhaps um, encrypt it or encode it at the very least, if you're going to be keeping it. Uh, but, you know, keeping a note of it, that is. <clears throat> so when you submit, it should take you over and it will just load for a few moments. Once this installs the entire plugin, we'll get the idea. So this is effectively the stage that I am at with the other application, the one or the other container. So this is, you know, where it takes you effectively. And yeah, this is basically where, where you kind of get, you know, actual insights and actual, you know, intel into your application. So that's effectively the entire application in a nutshell. <clears throat> um, so yeah, you get you get you get the idea of how the application works. It's awfully similar to uh, Trivi. If you've seen um, Trivi running in a Kubernetes environment, you'd run Trivi and it will give you back all of you know the vulnerabilities um, or the issues that you know the that, that you may face or within your image, uh, as well as obviously Kubebench as well as another one that helps with um, with with sort of um, your vulnerabilities. I think that was from CVE where you just simply run the application. You run the command and it will effectively output a number of different issues wrong with your environment and it will give you those remediations for them too. So that's quite handy. Uh, it's a really, really good application to know. And it's another one you can now put on your CV once you obviously start practicing it further. So yeah, if you like this video, if you like the style of the video, if you like the topic of the video, then do let me know. If not, then of course, give me some feedback as I always request. I really do appreciate your time. Thank you very much and have yourselves a lovely day on the next one.